Hello biology class. Welcome back to another lecture. As you can see with your eyes, this is lesson four, titled Antibiotics and Vaccines. Uh, the goal of this lesson is to clear up any misconceptions uh, that we may have about what antibiotics and vaccines do, as it is a super super common thing to be confused about. Um, even my grandma the other day was confused about which works for which. She asked me over the phone. Um, so we're going to just clear a little bit of this up. We're going to focus on these two things as they are very, very different. So key point one and two are about antibiotics and key point three and four are about vaccines. So antibiotics. Antibiotics are medications that fight bacterial infections. Uh, they are for bacteria only. They will do absolutely nothing against a virus. What they do is they work by disrupting the process that is necessary for bacterial cell growth and replication. So they must be given during the infection. The bacteria must be there and they must be trying to replicate. That's the only time antibiotics are effective as they disrupt the process of replication. Antibiotics do not treat viral infections in any way because viruses are not bacteria. Antibiotics work against bacteria. Antibiotics might be given to someone with a viral infection to prevent a secondary infection from bacteria when the virus has weakened your immune system. That is something that is common. It is really important that um, we don't give antibiotics when there is no infection or no chance of infection. Antibiotics that I took six months ago will not be protecting me now. Antibiotics must be taken when there is an infection as they only work when the bacteria is actually replicating and they only work on bacteria, not on viruses. Key point two here, antibiotic resistance. Uh, when there's overuse and misuse of antibiotics, uh, it can lead to a rise in antibiotic resistance. So that's been happening uh, very commonly uh, recently is that there is a rise in antibiotic use and bacteria are becoming resistant. So this occurs when bacteria are no longer sensitive to a medication that should eliminate the infection. Um, these can potentially be very dangerous as there are limited ways to treat patients with resistant bacteria. So essentially, if we have a bunch of bacteria here and we treat it with antibiotics and we've done it a lot, so there's only two different types of bacteria here. We've got blue and orange. The antibiotics would kill all of the blue ones, but we'd be left with orange ones that the antibiotics do not work on. When antibiotics kill bacteria causing illness, they also cause kill good bacteria that protect the body from infection and can cause more damage when you overuse them. Essentially, you get left with way more orange or resistant bacteria than the original. And therefore, we cannot treat that bacteria with the antibiotics anymore. Some bacteria give their antibiotic resistance to other bacteria, and this causes even more problems. So it is really important that you only take antibiotics when you have a bacterial infection, when that is known. Uh, this cycle here can happen many, many times and you can get super bacteria, which cannot be treated. And then your body must fight it off with the third line of defense on its own. So antibiotics treat bacterial infections and it's important not to overuse them as you can become resistant or the bacteria can become resistant to uh, these antibiotics. Vaccines are completely different. Vaccines do not help anyone that is currently infected. Vaccines must be given before you get infected to protect you. So vaccines protect you against specific viruses. They do nothing at all for bacterial infections. Uh, this is again, not a treatment. Where an antibiotic was a treatment for a bacterial infection, a vaccine is not a treatment. A vaccine is protection against getting it in the first place. The goal of a vaccine is to provoke an immune response before you're actually exposed to a virus. So a, a virus, if you're exposed to it, will eventually produce third line of defense and a response for you there. The goal is to invoke that third line of defense before you actually get infected. Therefore, your body is ready for it. Uh, specifically, 
We would like our body to invoke the third line of defense to produce long-lasting antibodies. This prevents the virus from being able to replicate as it is recognized by antibodies and attacked by macrophages immediately. So if you've already got the antibodies in your system, they can immediately recognize the virus, immobilize it, and attack it, therefore causing much less severe illness or sometimes no, no illness at all. Vaccines don't only work to protect the person who gets it. Um, if I get the vaccine, uh, it not only protects me, but it protects everyone around me as I am not able to spread it to you anymore. If I am protected from it, uh, I cannot carry it from um, the store where I acquired it to the place where I am giving it to you. So it protects not only myself, but everyone around you as they are unable to spread the disease, even if exposed. This is known as herd immunity, where if 95% of the population is vaccinated, but 99.99% .99 of the population is protected from the virus. So herd immunity through vaccination is really, really a good idea. It will protect me and protect you, and protect everyone around us if um, just most of us get vaccinated and that's important because some people can't get vaccinated sometimes the elderly can't get vaccinated against a certain disease so it's important that everyone around them gets vaccinated so there's absolutely no chance that they will transmit it to them uh, herd immunity through acquired infection so through natural acquired infection instead of vaccination causes many many illnesses and can sometimes cause many many casualties that's why a vaccine is so, so important. Sometimes herd immunity is not even possible as antibodies are not long lasting. I talked about rotaviruses and rhinoviruses previously. Um, antibodies that you produce to those are not long lasting and therefore you can't have an immunity against those. And that's kind of the way that some viruses work, unfortunately. So there are many different ways you can make a vaccine and some of the oldest types of vaccines are over 100 years old and still being manufactured and used today. So these vaccines are extremely safe. They are extremely tested. The technology is well studied. Um, it is, you know, a very safe branch of um, medicine. Some vaccines are permanent. So some vaccines you only need to get once and will protect you forever while others require several doses, may require a booster every couple of years, like a tetanus shot. Uh, the flu vaccine is actually needed every single year as they um, kind of refine it to protect against certain flus and uh, that are going to be more prominent compared to others. And one really important thing is that vaccines have not ever been linked to autism. Here's a chart that you have in your notes as well. Uh, this chart shows all the vaccines that you have gotten. Uh, you've probably gotten all of these or most of these, uh, depending on what age you are, obviously. Uh, we'd be about here. So you might not have gotten your second dose of meningococcal. You see the cockle? Meningococcal, that means it's a circular or a spherical one. Good to know. So anyway, as soon as your um, birth, you get a hepatitis B shot and at one month you get a second dose of it. Uh, it can be given anywhere between one and two months. I believe it's usually given at the same time as these ones in the second month, which is a rotavirus dose, which doesn't protect against all of them, but some of them, diphthera, tetanus, uh, and acellular pertussis. I know pertussis is a cough and tetanus is um, a bacteria, or sorry, a virus that lives on rust. I said bacteria, I made a mistake, scratch that. Um, we've got pneumonococcal conjugate, so that's pneumonococcal. That is circular bacteria that can cause pneumonia. Uh, we've got polio virus given at two months, and then again at four months, you've got a third dose of hepatitis B. You've got third and fourth doses of uh, tetanus and pertussis, diphtheria. You've got a lot of shots. Um, you get influenza vaccines annually when you are six months or older. Uh, you get your measles, mumps, and rubella MMR vaccines. You get your varicella vaccines. That's chickenpox. If you don't get your chickenpox vaccine and you catch it, you can get a, uh, the, vac the virus can uh, come back later in life when your immune system is weakened and cause lots of problems, uh, including shingles. Uh, there's the hepatitis A shot, 
Again, another tetanus diptera pertussis shot called Tdap at 10 and 11 years. I think we can get some of these at school. There's the HPV virus, a human papilloma virus that women often get to prevent, uh, protect against cervical cancer. And we'll talk about how viruses can cause cancer um, in the next lesson. And as you can see, there's just a lot. Uh, vaccines are extremely safe and extremely beneficial, for, not only to protect you, but everyone around you from these diseases. Um, key point four, talk a little bit about the COVID-19 vac leading vaccines that as I'm speaking, um, I'm being, or I read that are going to be distributed in the UK in the coming weeks to start. Uh, initial studies point to these vaccines being 90 to 90 for percent, 90 to 95 percent effective, which is very, very, very high. Uh, these use uh, a new kind of technology that uses messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is a, um, a protein that can tell your cells how to make another protein. So the protein that they're telling your cells to make is the spike protein, and that spike protein is on the outside of the coronavirus. So essentially this vaccine is telling your cells to make the spike protein that is on the coronavirus. And once you make this spike protein, your third line of defense can start to kick in. That spike protein is what is detected by your third line of defense and what causes your T cells, B cells, and antibodies and macrophages to all kick in to attack it. So if you can make this spike protein early, you can start that process before you're actually um, exposed to the virus. So the T cells mark the spike protein with cytokines. The B cells find those cytokines and produce antibodies to recognize the spike protein. And the antibodies like on, latch onto the spike proteins to mark them for destruction. Macrophages will then destroy those antibodies, uh, or sorry, what the antibodies mark. And these antibodies will last in the blood to prevent against infection. So this is a new type of vaccine that uh, uses your cells to produce the protein that causes the immune response. Um, some vaccines uh, are a dead virus or an inactivated virus that causes the third line of defense. But um, in this case, these leading vaccines um, actually tell your cells to make the protein. So the protein is not actually attached to the virus, so it is not dangerous. Uh, when you make it, when it comes in with the virus, it is the protein that allows it into your cells. So that is when it is dangerous. Uh, if you guys have questions about this stuff, please let me know. I love to chat about it. Uh, it's very cool technology. Um, but the whole goal of any vaccine at all is always to produce the third line of defense response or the immune system response. Uh, there's two things for you to do with this one. Um, one called what does this vaccine do and the other bacterial versus viral infections. Please check those out. And if you have questions about any of this at all, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon.